Uh, it's real nice to be with you this morning, and uh, thank you uh, for the introduction, and thank you for all your hard work. You and Jeff well, work pretty darn hard uh, on uh, on keeping White Ale going. But I appreciate very much uh, this opportunity because everybody knows that uh, I have been trying to reach out to young people for a long time, believing that uh, the next generation is getting a bad rap. They're inheriting a mess. Uh, some of uh, those uh, in that same in your same generation, of course, think all they have to do is uh, know the rules and uh, get on the great Depending on government doesn't work. What we need to do is emphasize the cause of liberty and depend on ourselves for more of what we need.
conservatives say, yeah, we shouldn't have so much government interference, even though I think they have a very uh, weak program for this, because even conservative Republicans who preach that uh, are very much involved in, in government intervention. But in, in theory, uh, there's one group that would like uh, free markets and voluntary choices and government out of the way in economics. And there's another group that says, well, in social life, uh, we should have this uh, volunteerism as well. All associations that are not harmful uh, should be permissible uh, with protection of uh, children under age. Uh, but the whole purpose of the libertarian movement is to put the pieces back together again and say, well, there aren't two pieces. You don't have to defend personal liberty but not economic liberty. You don't have to defend economic liberty and not personal liberty. You don't have to intervene in some countries but not other countries. We put it together and we have this consistent package of saying that we have non-intervention. I like the term non-intervention. Non-interventionism in, in personal lives and economic lives as well in the lives of other people around the country. And uh, this, is, this should be our goal, is bringing this together to solve the problem and prove mankind, I am convinced personally, that under these conditions of non-intervention and defining liberty, that you, we would have the greatest chance for peace and prosperity. No, we will not have a perfect society. It's not utopia. But the utopians all end up in Washington pretending they know what's best, you know, for everybody. You know, I just did a little talk on, uh, for the Ron Paul channel on Hayek, and, uh, and, and he, he talks about, uh, uh, you, you know, the pretense of knowledge. That's what he talked about when he gave his speech when he won the Nobel Prize. And he says the real basic problem is that uh, too many people in Washington, especially those who go into government, have this pretense of this, this assumption that they know more than everybody else, which is obviously not the case, because nobody can know what you would like to do. Nobody knows how you want to spend your money or your time or whose friends you're going to have and how you want to pursue your economic interests. So it's a pretense of knowledge, and that's what has to be, uh, be rejected. But um, today, we see many problems because we don't follow this. Uh, in, uh, in economic terms, we're in the midst of an economic crisis, which you're inherited. Uh, the crisis actually has been ongoing. I think the real beginning of the current crisis started in the year 2000 with the first thing of the NASDAQ bubble. Although they've been able to revive the economy periodically with a housing bubble and now with a bond bubble, and things sort of limp along. But steady down downtrend of uh, real wages, number of people employed, standard of living, and that's been going on for a long time. Matter of fact, you can even trace it back to us uh, severing our link with the gold standard back in 1971. So that's a major problem. But also you have the, uh, the, the whole idea of government regulating personal lifestyles. That I think is changing, and I think there's been some inroads to this. Certainly, what is great about uh, addressing the uh, war on drugs is the fact that the people through their state legislatures have stood up to the federal government and in many ways have performed a function called nullification, and right now we are making progress to chase the feds out of town and quit this insane war on drugs. But another area, it seems like Republicans and Democrats are obsessed with continuing the process of intervention overseas. Although I can come up with some pretty good statistics, uh, mainly motivated by a lot of young people, that we're sick and tired of what's going on overseas. We're sick and tired of the wars. We're sick and tired of being in 130 countries. We're sick and tired of invading countries. A lot of lives lost, spending a lot of money, and insist on elections that when they don't go our way, we're unhappy and we get rid of the government that just got elected, such as happened in Egypt. But just think of the chaos and the mess and the killing and the money spent in the wars of the last decade or so, ever since 9-11, going into Afghanistan, uh, going in, into Iraq, uh, uh, our involvement in Pakistan, Yemen, and all around North Africa. We continue to be involved, basically because we don't follow a fundamental principle. We have no business being like a war right to do. We have not followed the Constitution, and we haven't taken the advice of the founders. Because the Bible says stay out of the internal affairs of other nations and don't get involved in entangling alliances. And that's about all that we do. But where, where is the big crisis right now? Well, they're all over because you can't say, well, things are so 
been done in the Iraq and Afghanistan. I think they're still hot beds. Look at what's look at the mess in Syria. We go in there to uh, say we, we finally get tired of uh, Assad, so we're going to help get rid of him. And all of a sudden, we find out that we've aligned ourselves with the Al Qaeda. You know, it goes on and on. But but really, the big news is uh, what's happening happening in Crimea over this weekend because there's a referendum. I always thought we were for democracy. You know, we we went uh, we we go uh, out and, and, and take over these countries and demand an election. And, uh, and then if we don't like it, of course we object to it. But here, <clears throat> here the people of Crimea uh, are saying they want to have a referendum. And people in this country, the neocons, uh, you know, are saying, oh no, you can't do that. It's not going to be a fair election. Well, there may be some infractions. <laughs> there may be some infractions in this country now and then with our elections too. <laughs> Sometimes, as you might have noticed, they don't have all the votes. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, uh, we're, our side, your, the Europeans and Americans, are strongly objecting to this election. Now, they don't object to elections. They only object to what they think might be the outcome of the election. Now, uh, I personally believe that the Crimeans had an absolutely, perfectly free election, and Every single person in the Crimea were, uh, you know, uh, as their, their opinion, they probably definitely not want to be part of Ukraine, and they would much prefer to be part of Russia, which they have been for 300 years. You know, off and on, they speak Russian, they are Russian descent. So uh, this, this whole idea that we preached, and thanks to a guy like Woodrow Wilson, who took us to World War I, and one of his goals was to have the right of self-determination. Sure, as soon as you speak out the right of self-determination, what do you have to endorse? You have to endorse secession. You know, what, if Crimea was to secede from Ukraine, you don't have a right to do it. And uh, if the countries after the Soviet system collapsed that uh, were involuntarily part of the Soviet Union, they secede, they get out. We didn't like what the British were doing, so we seceded from, from Great Britain. So I think the basic principle, a moral principle, is that we have, should have the right of self-determination. And for me personally, it's always going toward the smallest unit of government. I believe that would be a great uh, blessing to us. And uh, I think one of the problems uh, in our country isn't that we haven't legalized secession. It had been legalized and then it was taken away. I think it was just out of you know, I don't say, well, everybody should secede from this country. But if we have the right of secession, the right of nullification, we will rein in the federal government. That's what's happening with these drug laws. We're reining in the federal government because uh, the people have spoken out. So in spite of all the problems that you see, and, and a president that just writes executive orders after executive orders, and president after president, or without declaration, the fair and trillions of dollars, uh, you know, unappropriated. In spite of all that, there's great progress going on. But let me mention just a couple things about uh, what's happening in U Ukraine uh, that isn't talked about too much in the media. It's usually just territory they're talking about. But it, I believe most of what's going on there and the precipitation of this has to do with bankruptcy, uh, similar to the way Greece was going bankrupt. And when a country goes bankrupt, that means they can't pay the banks. They borrow money from the banks at different entities. So uh, they're under the gun, and American banks are involved, European banks are involved, matter of fact, these Russian banks are involved, and uh, the, uh, the Ukrainians can't pay their bills. And this is, this is what is happening, uh, and, 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 uh, and we're threatening Russia right now with sanctions, uh, uh, freezing of assets, but guess what? The Russians have one up on us. They have already taken a hundred billion dollars of our treasury bills and dumped them. And we saw that last week. The one thing that's really important to happen last week, gold prices went up, uh, you know, because of well, more buying gold. But the dollar went down. Here we have this emergency price of the world, the dollar's king, the reserve currency of the world, but the dollar still went down. Uh, it, it, and, uh, you know, $100 billion, not a heck of a lot compared to the trillions going on, but uh, in, in the December, China even sold uh, $50 billion. 
So the trend is starting to get away from the, from the dollar. I think that is very, very significant. And uh, we as a country and our government ought to be a little bit more cautious about bashing China, uh, Russia uh, because they can align themselves with China. They can bring us down anytime they want. They want to freeze the assets of the Russians, which to me is theft. Uh, how do you know they're guilty of what crime we charge them with? Freeze their assets tens of billions of dollars. We're literally stealing that money. Well, guess what? American companies are entrenched in Russia. There's a lot of big companies that have assets in Russia. Um, they can freeze those assets too. The sanctions are a temptation by many to go along with because they think it's short of war. But I say it's the initiation of the war. And so that's the reason I'm against them.
deal with it in the ideological world. People say that you shouldn't be ideological, you should be compromising and sell it out. Well, those who are in the middle is in the ideology of pragmatism and selling half of the liberty movement, uh, the liberty ideas to the authoritarian. So you have to have precise belief, and this is what's happening today. The idea of liberty uh, is, is appropriate today because of the failure. The failure of communism in the last century, and the failure of Keynesianism and interventionism in this century. There's a vacuum out there, and it's your job to fill it, to have a precise understanding about what liberty is all about. And we've had a taste of it in this country. It went great uh, over the many, many years. The last hundred years has not done, it has not gone well, but believe it, it's alive and well. The, it, the ideas of liberty are much more, uh, uh, much, much uh, more alive today than they were when I was your age, because it was much more complacent. You might say, no, no way, I, I know too many people who are complacent, but that is not the case. And there is a change going on. Austrian economics is spreading because we have the internet and out of the dire need of filling the void. That doesn't mean it's a guaranteed golden path. It means that you better be careful and better work hard because the authoritarians will come down hard. You will still have the John McCain's of the world. And the other neocons will say the only solution is more bombs and more killing and more war. So I would say what you have to advocate is more peace, more prosperity, and more liberty. Thank you very much.
some went on and, uh, and uh, for Terry getting involved and having more rules and court orders and the federal government involved and uh, curriculum being dictated and being more, more complex. So on an issue like this, uh, it, you can apply this to a lot of things on what can the animal right to do it. Well, you know, little experiences, it is simple. Uh, now, if you're homeschooling or a private school, you can rule. If you want to well, they're smoking, no drinking, and no e cigarettes, and then you can't do this, and you can't do that, you come under those conditions and volunteer track, and it's it's easy to solve. It's not, this is not private. Uh, this is it, it's a government. Uh, so different protects you the best ability you can, those Choices, you know, and individuals, and, and that that is where the problem comes from. I would uh, I would think uh, if if it complex, it sounds like the e cigarettes are pretty benign and not hurting anybody, and if you could make the case for that, uh, you should always. If, if there's a big controversy, you can't quite make sure whether anybody's getting hurt from it. Then you should err on the side of liberty and making freedom of choices. But you know, uh, I, I, I don't. Uh, if I had a private school, school building, I wouldn't allow smoking in it. And so, in a public school, you would. Uh, it, it's a lot easier. You, you don't want to sit in a classroom and have people smoking cigarettes. So it sounds like a reasonable rule. But when it comes to e-cigarettes, it's a little more complex because you can get to follow the danger. But the owner should be able to set the rule and have a voluntary agreement. The problem always is, uh, you know, who, who is the who is the so-called owner in a public educational system, and uh, that uh, has to be sorted out. And, but if, if in doubt, Eric, liberty. Questions? Taking the responsibility and authority from the Congress and giving it to the executive 
branch. And the Congress should deal with international trade, and that's it. They should, be, they should write the rules. But to give the authority to the president is going in the wrong direction. I don't want more authority in the executive branch. I want less. So I voted on principle that we shouldn't give this authority to the president, even under the pretense that he might lower, uh, lower some of the tariffs. Sometimes they did lower tariffs. But many times, uh, still, what happens if you want to go to the WTO, the WTO uh, sort of uh, manages the trade wars. Somebody does this, you go to the WTO, you complain, and they give you permission to put on tariffs. And it's, it's managed trade. The biggest, the largest corporations generally like the WTO management because they sort of got their privileges. But when it came to uh, smaller companies and, and free market companies, they, they really understood uh, that you had to have some inside track to get the right kind of ruling. But it's managed trade. It's not free trade. Free trade uh, could be done by the Congress passing a law that says, there shall be no tariffs on anything coming into this country from Canada. And uh, we do have a lot of free trade with Canada. But you could do that. You could do that uh, you know, just with one country. You guys have these multi-level. You don't have to have NAFTA and CAFTA and WTO and all these other organizations because uh, that just brings mischief. So I'm for free trade, but I do not vote for it, nor do I support these international free trade agreements. Dr. Paul, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. And I work in the grassroots, and my question is, how can we get libertarians, Republicans, and Tea Partiers to work together more uh, with less hostility? Her question was, uh, what is your advice so that Tea Party, Libertarian, Republicans, Conservatives can all work together more effectively? Uh, uh, she's asking, let me see if I got this right, is she asking whether these various groups should come together and act in one group to be more effective? And how they, and how they can do that, yes. But you know, I think they should come together on the issues. I don't think everybody should be in one group uh, because it will narrow it down. If everybody had to accept 100% of everything I've ever said in order to belong to the group, I don't that would be a, a good idea. Uh, but if we're fighting, uh, if we're trying to push uh, a certain uh, a certain program, and you can get people from different groups to come together, uh, you know, whether just so it's a freedom issue, and just so you can endorse that issue. So I think the um, I think the groups uh, that they should be met and they should be varied. I did become a bit frustrated over what happened to the Tea Party movement, but uh, I don't know whose fault that was, but I, I was convinced that the real Tea Party, modern Tea Party movement started in the Ron Paul presidential campaign in 07 on the... Uh, <laughs> but before we knew it, uh, the Republican Party came in and all of a sudden they wanted to alter the foreign policy and a few other things, and they did not chant the same thing. Now, it may be that we were too weak and not aggressive enough, but uh, let me tell you, there may be some Tea Party people that we can work with, and they may have watered down the original program that we have, but uh, I don't worry, I don't stay up at night worrying about why I have watered down the issues. So if you go where the groups are, where you can work with other groups, fine and dandy, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time saying, well, we have to be one group. Uh, I would say, yeah, uh, convince people that if you're right on this, this one issue, then go look at these other issues and come together with us. Dr. Paul, this is an honor. Um, I heard on the TV this morning that um, the United States is giving away the internet. Um, who are they giving it to, for one thing? And, you know, it's our taxpayer money that developed the internet, and I would just like to no, so her question was about the uh, internet, and there was a report today that the United States is working toward releasing their last bit of control over the internet, and she's wondering if you could comment about that, whether you think it's a good idea, and what your overall take is. 
I don't know the details of those so-called plans that we would give up some responsibility. I'd like to see the internet out of the hands of all government. That's what I don't know. Thank you. 